Hi, I'm Juan Osa with High River Labs and Hunting, and I'm here today in Tehachapi, California, with the owner and founder of High River Labs and Hunting, Dave Seipel. Thank you, Juan. Hello, and uh, I'd like to uh, introduce you to High River Labs and Hunting and give you a tour of our facility and talk about what we do and what we can do for you. We're located in Tehachapi, California, sitting on about 250 acres of property up here. Pretty much uh, nestled between the hills uh, here in Tehachapi. We have some coastal sagebrush and uh, excellent area for chucker and pheasant for the hunting facility. We also run uh, dog competitions here, uh, timed hunting. How many, How many fields do you run, Dave? We run five fields at a time. Uh, we also have a, a puppy field. We have three ponds when the water is available. Um, we have time competitions. Um, we also do a lot of uh, charity hunts here. Now, you're also running a breeding f facility here? We also have High River Labs, which we do uh, custom breeding. And we also do uh, custom boarding and dog training. We breed a 60-40 dog is what we call it. 60% family dog and a 40% hunting dog. That's what an average guy uses his dog for. So we breed for temperament, ability, knowledge, disposition, and we're looking for certain confirmations. Tell me about that program. How long would it take for you to take a puppy and turn it into a hunting dog? Well, that depends on the puppy. If you come to me and want a puppy, I'm gonna ask you what you want it for, how much you're gonna hunt, and if you have any young kids. So we've had that interview, you understand what I'm looking for, you've selected the right breeding, and now we have a puppy that's eight, pup. 10 weeks old. What do we do now? Well, you can, you can either have me pick the pup or okay. you can pick it. Okay. Um, puppies are rated in, in, in personalities like human, A, B, and C anymore. Okay. It's not so much first pick anymore. Um, where the first pick kind of comes into effect is if you have two or three people on an A personality dog out of one litter then that's where the pick would go. Okay. But we want to match up with the personality of the dog, what we see at the time. Just because we think it's a B personality at eight, 10 weeks old, doesn't mean that dog is gonna be that B personality when it's three years old. A lot of that has to do with the environment, how you raise it, and how it's trained. Okay. Hi, I'm Dave Seipel with High River Labs. We're talking about gear today. One of the most important things to have is a gear bag. Um, so when you, when you go to leave, you make sure you have all your gear. Your bumpers come in round and octagon. Um, what I like about the Avery bumper is it teaches the dog how to bite. Um, kind of stops the rolling effect. They make a really nice bumper. Um, Drake makes a great bumper and they also make a force fetch bumper that has uh, larger pieces of plastic on each side to keep, the, keep it centered and weighted for the dog. Um, it's a really great tool that they've come out with and they have different size bumpers for you with the ropes already on. So Drake's really thought about this and they've made some really nice bumpers. Today we're gonna talk about first aid kits. Um, you can make them as complicated or as simple as you like. I'm gonna go give you a quick overview of what I have in my kit, and then from there, we'll go in and I will talk about each individual item. I have a waterproof box that I carry my stuff in. Um, it also comes with a tray. Um, it's a boating box. I like it because it's orange and it sticks out and people think first aid. Um, I have some dog aspirin. I have some numbing agent that I can give to the dog when I want to give stipple, uh, staples or sew the dog up. I have needle and thread. I have a thermometer, some needles, some bandage and some tape, different types of antibiotics. I have uh, ear wash, hydrogen peroxide, some motion sickness, pills, um, scissors, hemostats, staple gun, staple remover, bandages, rubber gloves, um, alcohol wipes, an ear flush or uh, any type of flush for a wound. This first aid kit can be as complicated or as simple as you would like it. Carry the stuff that you're comfortable with. This is some of the stuff that I carry and happy hunting and let's not have our dogs get hurt. Thank you very much.
So Dave, um, there's a lot of different opinions on how you start a dog on training, what commands you teach first. I've heard all manner of opinion. Books have been written about this thing. How do you guys do things here at High River Labs? Well, here at High River Labs, um, basically I use a lot of the same commands as other trainers use. Okay. Um, most Can you tell of us what those commands are? Most of the trainers, we've all kind of figured out these are the commands this is what we use. Like uh, here. Okay. When you want, when your dog is out running around, you use the word here, and you want that brings the dog to you. Is that the first command you're teaching? That's the first command that I really teach is here. Okay. Here is one of the most important things. You always want your dog to come to you no matter what. Right. And then, usually from there, you teach sit. Okay. And you've got to be really careful with sit, because a lot of people like to push down on the hips, and that's bad for a young dog. Okay. When you teach a dog to sit, you can either use a treat and lift it up above so they have to tilt back to sit, or you can grab the dog by the collar and grab a little bit of the flesh on the hip and push back on a 45 degree angle and say sit. Then you want to teach heel. Okay. Which is a long, where the dog will sp swing around and come into your side, heel, and then sit. And then we're, we're going to start getting into okay. All right. So if your dog is at heel in a setting, you want the dog to just go off and do whatever it wants to do. You tap it on the head and say, okay. That tells the dog it's a free dog it can run about. Okay. And then if you want to get more technical, you've got a fetch and drop. So when you say fetch, the dog wants to put something in its mouth. When you tell it to drop, it drops it in your hand. Okay. When we release our dogs from heel or steady the shot, we always release on the dog's name. Hey, let's wrap up the commands here. Okay. Um, I've told you all the commands, and we've we've talked about each one. Here in a little bit, we're gonna haul out a couple of dogs, River, and maybe a few other ones, and let's have some fun demonstrating. And I'll show you and give you some hands-on on each command and how to implement it. Great. Be perfect, Dave. All right. Well, thank you, Juan. Okay. This is River. She'll be one of our demonstration dogs today. Great. So what we're looking for is knowledge of the command, response time, and what they what they want to do. No matter what position I do, as long as I say heel, heel, she's going to automatically come in and heel. If you notice, her front shoulder and her front leg is lined up with the seam of my jeans. Right. That's where I like my dogs. Okay. All right, I have a gentleman out here. As soon as I lift, and this is what a, a standard command to train a dog to retrieve. What we're going to do is I'm going to lift my hand up. When I do that, that signals him to throw the bird. And what we're doing is we're looking for a nice arc okay. and some height time. Ready? Ready. All right, sit. You gave the command to sit. Arm up. Whack, 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 whack. Bang. River. We release our dog off our name. Now, if you want to practice with the dog on the force fetching aspect of things, you can take your bird or your bumper, doesn't matter which, sit, fetch, sit, hold, hold, reinforce it, make sure she does it. If she drops it, you need to give the correction. The whistle's used for several different things. It's whistle to bring her back, which is a double or triple tweet. A single blow is for the dog to sit. And once the dog sits, it's used for hand signals to divert the dog and give dogs to direct the dog directions to the bird. Got it. Heel. Sit. All right, Dave, thanks for explaining what we do in the off season. So here in Southern California, the duck hunting season starts in the middle of October. What do you do and at what point do you start tuning them up and getting them ready for the hunting season? I'd start early September. Um, depending on where you're at, and I would start doing more formal drills, getting a shotgun involved, maybe uh, some frozen ducks that you saved from last year, and actually working on some technical marks. Okay. Um, using some water, some ponds, some toolies, and, and so on. Very good. Okay. 
Well, it's been a pleasure uh, seeing your operation and how you do things here at High River Labs and hunting. It's been a great day, and you showed us a lot of good things, and uh, thanks for taking the time, Dave. Well, come back another month and another weekend. We'll show you some more tricks. Absolutely. Thank you.